You are watching the Rock and Roll Circus Show. We are hanging with uh, Daddy Clean himself, Mr. Norm Nardini. How you doing, Norman? Ow wee! He's got a brand new CD out. Brand new CD called "It's Alive," and it is alive as it states. Uh, now you've. Uh, what was the concept in coming up with uh, putting out a live CD? This is a new venture for you. It's just, I think the best album I ever made in my life was about 15 years ago, and it was an album called Eatin' Alive, and it kind of started me off on my career. So lately, I just thought the fun thing to do would be, and since uh, a lot of the young bands aren't really good at playing live, I thought, well, maybe we'd teach them a little lesson about what it's like, the miracle of rock and roll whenever it's put right in your face, live, living, and breathing, ladies and gentlemen, it can't be stopped. I'll be okay. What, uh, what prompted you? You covered one of uh, the Cyclones tunes. Uh, look what you've done. Uh, what uh, motivated that? Well, I actually, I wrote, I actually wrote it. And that makes perfect good sense. I <laughs> hit the host. But uh, no, I wrote it for uh, probably for Glenn, I think. I wrote it a few years ago, and I finally got him. I had been interested in him doing a mess of my stuff, and that was one of the st songs he picked out to do. And since he did it so different than I ended up doing it, I thought it would be okay if I did it, and I thought it would be unique, you know, because he does it kind of up-tempo, and we do it kind of slowed down. A little more laid back. Right. We do it in a uh, very casual approach. Well, you, you just came back over. He was on the, uh, the, the Overnight Express back from Norway, I believe. What was it like over there? Is this, like, the first time you've been over there? Or tell our, tell our, tell our TV viewer people. Well, uh, Europe in... This is my second time over. My first time I did Germany, and this time I did Norway. And uh, Europe, our country could learn a whole lot about living and life and music even from the Europeans because they have a very much more uh, – they, they don't throw away the past, and they don't – they uh, kind of have a respect for the tradition of music as opposed to they're not into who's in today. They're into who's made good music in the past 30 years. Or, they more or less don't go with trend, but what, what, what feels – from what I've seen, I, I think America and England are the very trendy countries, but I think continental Europe is uh, in the tradition and showing respect. to some, When something's done right, it's done right, and that's forever. Just like their buildings and stuff over there. They have buildings that were made in the 30s that in, in this country. They have buildings that were made four and 500 years ago. Older, Their buildings are older than our country. There's, there's history books about it. Right, and I'm overwhelmed by that because I'm – you know, just a guy from Pittsburgh, and uh, whenever you see different ways of thinking, and my tendency is to think the way the Europeans think, you know, to let, if something's done right, let it live forever. You're sat in Pittsburgh, but uh, you do quite well, like up in New York, over in Jersey. How, how are the differences in the crowds between over there and as, as opposed to Pittsburgh, your own hometown? Well, it's different. I think one thing about Pittsburgh is I think people here really – watch a show for some reason people here i mean if you can play and entertain the people in pittsburgh you can entertain anywhere it seems like in uh jersey and new york and cleveland especially those cities people are more tend to gravitate towards social behavior as opposed to musical behavior when they're in a nightclub and we tend to beat them into our pittsburgh way of thinking which is when i'm on stage you watch me you know what I mean? that's the way it is no doubt that's the way we want it and uh, you've been on everything. You've been on. The, you've been in the New York, uh, New York. Uh, what's the paper? Wall the Wall Street Journal up there. You've been in the very own Rock and Roll Reporter, as you can Locked see. And breathing. Check us out in all our glory. <laughs> and uh, you, you do gather a lot of press wherever you go. Uh, where does your strongest response seem to, to come from? I mean, press wise. Press wise and uh, fan wise. I would have to say New York City is probably one of our best spots in the whole country. It's, uh, as many bands as there are in New York City, there are, it doesn't seem like there's that many bands that really take their music as a way of life. Whereas, uh, you know, up in New York City, most of the bands are together to get a deal, to move to the next stage. They aren't together because that's who they are and that's what they do for life. So whenever we play up there, it, it seems like we stick out even more because people are like, well, you guys are serious about this. And it's like, well, of course, but up there it's different. You know? It's Norm Nardini. It's meant to be serious. That right. You're looking at the last true man of rock and roll, a living legend, and a great American. <laughs> a great American. I, On the rock and roll circuit. <laughs> I just try to throw that in. I love that one. Uh, there's the bad phone. Uh-oh. They'll answer that upstairs right here. Transport cool. Studios. Is that, is, that, is that where we're at? We're right here at Transport. In fact, this, we are, you're looking at me and Gigs right here in the east side of Pittsburgh. 
legendary building, the transport uh, recording building, and I've owned this building for about 14 years. And there's all kind of wild and great things that have happened right in these walls. Cool. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. I wanted to ask you about uh, what, what's up with this Harry Bottoms. Harry Bottoms is my bass player. Yeah, yeah I, I mistook it as uh, it was it was Eddie. Well, H- Harry's he came up with, with the pseudonym. Well, what happened was uh, Harry's real name is Ed Brown, and we worked together in the late '80s. And he moved away. And when he came. He moved to Colorado, and while he was out there, he had a dog that he fell in love with, and he named the dog Harry Bottoms. And when he came back to Pittsburgh to hang out with us, he kept talking about, oh, I wish Harry was here. And I says, well, you know, since you're a bass player and the name's Bottoms, and Harry's a great name for a man, you should maybe become Harry Bottoms, and he'll live on in your spirit. So uh, that's what happened. I took a little flack from his wife, not knowing that uh, that was still Eddie. Yeah. Flack from his wife. I, she uh, beat my ear too. But he has fun with that. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's fun for him. He seemed to at the excuses gig, which we'll be getting to in a little bit here. We have Norman live at excuses. I'm scared. I'm frightened right now. So you got to uh, play with Eddie Floyd over in Norway. Uh, what was that like? Hooking up with like one of the most traditional soul men that uh, you know probably helped inspire you at one time. Oh yeah. Well. I played all those songs, all the soul hits, uh, when they first came out in the 60s. But I had met Eddie two years ago when I did Germany. We opened. For, he, he sings for the Blues Brothers. And uh, I had met him on that show and met their manager, and that's how I got to go over to Norway this time. So uh, I got to jam with Eddie. It was great. He's a real cool entertainer and real easy and relaxed on stage. You know, he knows. He's got it done. He knows the miracle of performance. And he truly lives it. And uh, he shared it with you on stage. If only for a moment. <laughs> only for a brief moment. Now, uh, you recently got voted in High Times Magazine right. with the, your no, most, one of your most notorious tunes, Smoke Two Joints. Uh, how do you feel about that personally? Oh, I felt real lucky to, to just be noticed and included, you know, because you don't know, work as many years as I've been working. You, one of the things that, that sticks with you is whenever you do something that people latch on to, and it seems like Smoke Two Joints was a... It's a song that I didn't write, but I've been doing it for about eight years. And when people latch on to it, my version of it, it makes me, uh, gets me high. It's just a natural euphoria. Uh, can I say hallelujah? <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, uh, what keeps Norm Nordini before we go to excuses and check you out doing at uh, Heartbreak Shake, I believe, which was not released on anything else, by the way. Right, it's a new one. That's a brand new song. Uh, did that just was that just one night out all nighter hanging out writing or or did that sort of come about that night in studio? No, no, that came about at a, came about at a rehearsal because I felt that we needed uh, some dance things and some uh, good rock and traditional rock and roll songs. So I wrote it right in the middle of a rehearsal about uh, probably during the summer, and it was like cool. one new song I wrote for the album, and I thought this can help us define what this record is you know it'll help us define what we're going to put else we're going to put on the record you know and that helped me decide which old songs and which really old songs you know <laughs> would end up on there well here it is right now this is heartbreak shake and tell them where it's at norm live living and breathing on the south side of pittsville pennsylvania ladies and gentlemen we're going into the jungle in his natural habitat norman nardini that great american i'm talking about that rock and roll person he's gonna get on the stage with his man harry bottoms whitey cooper and you know what ladies and gentlemen we're gonna rock it's gonna get weird so touch with me now as we join the living daddy loves you 